Hey everyone, what's going on? I hope you're all having an awesome day. I have a new lightsaber giveaway for you all today. All you have to do is like this video if you actually enjoyed it, and comment below whose lightsaber you'd like to win. Contest ends December 25th, so be sure to check into the Instagram, Twitter, and the website. Also, there are a lot of spoilers in this video, so if you don't want to be spoiled, turn away now. But you can still enter. With that being said, if you saw The Last Jedi, enjoy this video, and if you didn't, there are lots of spoilers, so beware. All right, everyone, let's get on with it. Good luck and enjoy today's video. We would be honored if you would join us. By now, at least a large chunk of you have seen The Last Jedi, and we can start to dial in on exactly what we just saw. I won't lie. I left the theater upset and quite confused, yet moved at the same time. After having a few days to process things, it isn't what we think. None of it is. Literally, everything is right in front of us, and yet, it isn't. Luke says it himself, this isn't going to go the way you think, and that goes both ways. Ryan Johnson is a master of mind games, and if you've seen his other movies, then you know. J.J. Abrams brought Snoke into the picture, and he's the one who will finish it. So what do we know about Snoke so far? We know a lot, and for a character who has theorized for two years, smashing YouTube with clickbait theories, even up to thinking the most insane ideas. Heck, I'm sure many of you at this point are wondering if I made up my Snoke theory. Well, to show you all the proof, here are the emails from my inside source dated back to over half a year ago. Snoke, as you think, is dead. He isn't. With the information we got from him, his home world, his ring taken from Vader's castle, which I'll make a separate video on by itself, it's all just a way for us to theorize more on him. Disney wants us to think that he's dead. We are going to go through the next few months thinking that he is dead, but once the novelization comes out in March, and hopefully this video will help you understand that he's not dead, it will reveal a whole ton of things. Let's break it down, shall we? Snoke pulled Kylo Ren to the Twisted Dark since he was a little boy. Luke says this in his flashback that he wanted to kill Ben because he knew Snoke had already corrupted his mind, and it was far too late to bring him back. Do you guys remember the Knights of Ren flashback scene in The Force Awakens that Rey had? We didn't even see them in the film, not once. They will be explored more in Episode 9. Everything will be resolved, and I assure you, The Last Jedi will make sense. Ask me to say this two days ago after I just saw the film and I was sitting dumbfounded in my seat until the credits ended, and I'd just be as torn as you. But I've had time to think, read my old emails, and ponder upon what just happened. Snoke was able to smash Hux to the ground from across the galaxy in a hologram. That isn't power that can just be sizzled so easily. Snoke is not dead. In this movie, we were given the new information about how powerful the Force can be. The ability to bridge two people together just like Luke could with Leia in The Empire Strikes Back. However, now magnified 100-fold. Snoke created the bridge between Rey and Kylo, seeing everything into Kylo's mind and Rey's. Remember one of the last scenes of the film between Rey and Kylo? Kylo was very far away from Rey, yet he looked to her as if she were in front of him, the same way they both did throughout the film whenever their connection was bridged by Snoke. Either this bridge is now permanent, which I highly doubt, or Snoke is not dead. Luke, while across the galaxy, was able to literally create a force projection of himself into other people's minds, where he full-on kissed Leia on the head, gave her Han's dice from the Falcon, which she physically held in her hands, and then went to dodge Kylo's attacks. All the while, everyone thought that he was real. He made no movements on the ground, which should have parted the ice from the red salt. That was the first giveaway right there. The lightsaber was still intact. That was the second giveaway until we finally see that he was meditating this whole time and casting a force projection of himself. Snoke, I believe, was doing the exact same thing. He was not really in that room. His body split in two, and after the entire battle between the guards, Kylo, Rey, and then the Skywalker lightsaber creating an explosion being cut in half, his lower half just so casually falls to the floor when Hux goes to it. I believe that was an illusion for them to think, hey guys, I'm really dead here. And of course, to make the audience think that he's dead too. Now, there are theories that Snoke has gone into Hux's body. That's why people think Hux tried to pull his blaster on Kylo as he was knocked out. But I really don't see that happening. Now, look at this. When Luke projected himself, he was younger, his beard darker, and he was closer to that image from Return of the Jedi than what we actually saw in Octu. The same with Snoke. He looked healthier, his voice younger by a vast margin, and how he moved was much more fluid than his hologram in The Force Awakens, which literally takes place immediately before The Last Jedi, with not a moment even wasted between the films. 
It was all an illusion. He wasn't really there, but kept his projection for a while, just like Luke kept the cubes alive, so to speak, in Kylo's hands. Snoke looked shocked, not because he was dead, but because he was betrayed by Kylo. He even says he can feel every move Kylo makes, every thought in his mind. He was testing Ben to see if he would actually betray him. If he would move the lightsaber, then stop it before he actually ignited it. Now on a side note, remember when Kylo told Vader's helmet to show him again the way of the dark? Maybe that was all just Snoke conjuring the image of Vader to him. How convenient that Snoke had Kylo fully turned to the dark side, destroy the Skywalker lightsaber and cause Luke to commit suicide. Now in the event this is all wrong and he is dead, what have we just learned? When we saw Yoda appear, he was literally as powerful as Thor. He created lightning in the sky, burned down the tree, and prevented Luke from even going in to save the sacred texts. Which are still safe in Rey's possession, by the way, if you remember the ending scene on the Falcon with Finn closing the drawer. Force ghosts are more powerful than we have ever imagined. They are far more powerful than living beings. They are essentially the Force and nothing else. That's why Luke killed himself, to become even more powerful in the Force. That's a different video topic for itself, but I truly don't believe Snoke is dead. I don't think we even saw him once in the film, not his true state. Why would we be given all this background info for a character who literally has 10 minutes of screen time in two movies? And that look vastly different from one another with no time to spare in between. In The Last Jedi Complete Visual Dictionary, it's even explained how he navigates the unknown regions where we can also see one of his navigators in full costume that never appeared in the movie. However, did appear in the trailer right here. Go check it out for yourself. Replay that scene over and over again and try to zoom in on the character. It looks very close to that one in the Visual Dictionary. Since all of this information is unimportant for The Last Jedi, this means that we will see him again or this information would be useless. Either that, or the three films that Ryan Johnson will be creating, the new trilogy, will go into Snoke's lineage, his timeline, and his species. This leaves us all wanting to know more about Snoke, and that could maybe tie everything together. Ryan has also said that we learn exactly as much as we need to know about Snoke in The Last Jedi, which is a weird thing to say if he won't appear in Episode 9 or perhaps the new trilogy. He's not dead, guys. I don't even think we saw him in The Last Jedi. He was always in that room, we never saw him anywhere else, and we've seen Darth Bane speak to Yoda from beyond the grave, so why can't Snoke, presumably the most powerful being in the known and unknown galaxy, at least for now? We have the concept of Force Ghosts, which is now what Luke has transformed into, but what is the other part of the spectrum? We have the light and dark, and we've discovered both of them in this film, however, we haven't discovered the other part of the Force Ghosts. We know nothing about Snoke so far. Where did he come from? Are there more like him? These are the types of questions we need to ask, not just to blatantly believe everything that we just saw. Check this mosaic right here out. This was the image from Luke's temple. It's an image of the Prime Jedi in the First Jedi Temple. Kind of looks like Snoke, doesn't it? Balancing both the light and the dark. Could this be how Snoke and Luke know of each other? Take note of the separation, the light and the dark. It looks like the person has been cracked through the middle of the head, as if something has escaped from within. And now let's examine Snoke's head. That's a little too much coincidence for me. There is a lot to think about for the next two years, and I know many are throwing the movie in the bin. It takes everything we knew about Star Wars for the last 40 years and destroys it, but I think it only adds to it once Episode 9 comes out. Either that, or we're all doomed and Disney has killed the galaxy far, far away. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I'm sure it's all fine, and I'm sure that we'll come back to this moment in two years' time to reflect on everything that we thought we knew. I want to know, what did you think of everything to do with Snow? Do you think he's really dead? Do you think Luke is dead? Disney would be insane to kill off the two biggest characters in Star Wars right now, and I'm sure they're just dying to reveal some info about Snoke being alive so as to not hurt their ratings. Because, I agree with you, they really didn't do a good job of explaining anything. However, once Episode 9 does come out, it will put the pieces of the puzzle back in order. And when we step backwards, we will see how it all makes so much sense, tying every trilogy into one, just as J.J. Abrams has said. Let me know what you thought about everything, and where you think Luke and Snoke are now for the next film. Thank you for watching this episode of Star Wars Theory, everyone. Until the next episode, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you always.